Hey guys, welcome back to Shop Former Garage. Today we are working on this 1991 Mazda Miata. Yeah, 1900s. Um, it needs a clutch. Well, the customer came in saying, hey, my clutch is gone. I probably need a whole new clutch. I found out that there was no fluid in it and it's just leaking everywhere. I mean, it's got a bunch of leaks and stuff. And uh, we're going to replace the clutch master cylinder. We're going to replace the clutch slave cylinder. Now, I was able to get some fluid in it, pump the thing up and drive it in. Uh, so I believe that the clutch uh, disc, clutch plate are still in good condition. Um, of course, we won't know that until we can get out on the road. But um, it also has a bunch of oil leaks. So we're gonna deal with some oil leaks and we're gonna replace the timing belt. Yeah, I'll show you how you can replace the timing belt on one of these. Um, also sold the customer some new uh, hoses because their hoses are kind of crunchy and stuff. So uh, let's get into this. Let's start tearing it apart. Okay, let me show you what we're looking at here. So this slave cylinder, I believe was leaking. Uh, I don't think it was leaking a lot, but uh, over time it finally leaked everything out. And that's why uh, the customer lost uh, their clutch. Um, so there's some oil leaks and this is not really that bad. I've seen a lot worse, a lot worse. Okay, but we're going to deal with uh, what we have right here uh, way up in the top up there and this kind of looks like well maybe we got a rear main seal leaking and you know I mean it's possible that you could have a rear main seal but I know what's leaking for sure is way up in the top up there is the um, the crank position sensor yeah the crank position sensor on this engine is actually at the back of the uh, intake cam <laughs> so um, that that seal uh, right there is leaking and it's dripping oil all down here uh, valve covers leaking too uh, let me get this down and I'll show you the top of it all right so this is uh, what we're looking at here and I mean like I said it's not really that bad um, I've seen these things just draining oil all out the sides of the uh, valve cover. Uh, right here is that uh, crank position sensor I was telling you about. So that's got to come off so we can replace the seal on it. Also, uh, you got to take the valve cover off just to get the timing cover off so we can replace the timing belt. Uh, the other belts on this vehicle are, are good. I believe the customers replaced them, um, you know, not too long ago but um we're going to be pulling those off of course to replace the timing belt we got to get all this all these wires and tubes and stuff out of the way and uh draining the uh, coolant um we're gonna be replacing these hoses they're pretty crunchy the upper and lower radiator hoses and um just in all around just uh fixing it up you know for the customer um this is the master cylinder the clutch master cylinder we're gonna be replacing yeah that's pretty nasty in there but uh, when it came in it had no fluid in it at all and um, that um, yeah, I mean you know it happens over time uh, the seals they get you know dry and they crack and then they start to leak and um, uh, this vehicle um, I don't know what um, it's got uh, 165,000 miles on it. Okay, so, but uh, it's in good condition. I mean, uh, really, uh, if you take a look at it, uh, I mean, it's really a nice, nice vehicle still. It's, it's still in really good condition. It has um, this uh, hard top, removable hard top. So, Oh, uh, of course it's locked. If I get in here, you can see there is the soft top right there. So it has the soft top in it and the customer uh, put in a uh, remo removable hard top. Of course, 
you're going to need more than one person to remove that top. You're going to have to unclamp it and stuff and pick it up. But uh, it's cool. I mean, it shows that the customer cares. And there's a lot of enthusiasts that love these vehicles. So um, I don't blame them. You know, they're cool little vehicles. Um, every time that I get in one, I know that I'm in one because I bust my knee right on that dashboard every single time. I just don't fit in them. But uh, it's a cool little vehicle and uh, this engine has a lot of power for the size of the vehicle. So I think that's what makes them really cool and uh, makes people like them, you know? Um, so we're gonna start uh, turning this apart. I think that we'll probably do the clutch first. And um, what happens a lot if these vehicles sit, and it's not just, you know, the Mazda Miata or Mazda or anything like that. It, it's, it's pretty much all vehicles, you know. Um, brake systems too, but um, seen it a lot with clutches. If the vehicle sits for a long period of time, and I'm not saying this thing has been sitting, I really don't know. I don't think it has. But those seals uh, in that master cylinder, they start to crack and, and wear and stuff like that. And then you uh, lose your clutch, your pedal goes to the floor. Sometimes they go to the floor and it won't come back. Um, if you put fluid in them and uh, just start pumping it, pumping the heck out of it, you know, they'll come around, you know, after a little while. Um, and that's what happened with this one. I put fluid in and I started pumping the heck out of it. And I just kept on pumping and kept on pumping until I finally started getting a feel that the clutch was actually uh, disengaging because uh, that's what it was doing it wasn't disengaging the clutch was on you could start it in first gear and it would take off all the things cranking of course that's not good for your starter but um you know at least you could get somewhere but uh yeah if that uh, ever happens so you just keep on pumping the thing make sure you got fluid in it and it'll come around eventually you're gonna have to replace it you know so that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna put a new um uh, clutch master cylinder in put a new uh, clutch slave cylinder we'll get that done first and then we'll start taking all this this uh, apart up here and we'll get the uh, valve cover off we'll get that seal replaced back there we'll start taking all this off get the uh, timing cover off get the timing belt out you know and of course uh, pull the hoses off while we're there because it's just going to be better you know to do it while we're there might as well so let's get to it Okay, the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna shove a bunch of rags down in here for any fluid that leaks out. Just try and prevent it from getting everywhere. And, and you know, as you know, it, it uses brake fluid. Brake fluid is caustic. It um, can take paint off. So I um, wanna minimize that as much as possible. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is break this loose. Just to make sure it's loose because I'm going to take the, uh, the master cylinder off. And um, I want to make sure that I get this loose before that because otherwise it's going to be kind of hard to, to take it off. It was too tight. It was not tight. You know, it was just right. And what did I do with my tools now? Get this nut off right here. Okay, that's coming off. Everything's coming off. Get the other one loose. Down in here, there's not a lot of room. Get that nut. Let that one fall down. The lock washer over there. Pull this loose. Of course, it's not loose enough. Get 
and whenever I get this out whenever I put the the other one in I'll show you how we bench bleed it because it's not gonna be the way that you think we're gonna bench bleed it and I'll show you that I'll show you a little trick and it works on uh, on brake master cylinders too and this thing just has a rod that pokes in so we don't have to worry about disconnecting a rod or anything it's right there okay so right there at the tip of this right there there's still fluid there's still fluid in here of course of course uh, um, this um, system I believe was low on you know I mean it, it was out of fluid and I had to put fluid in it was completely dry um, so I'm sure that there's air in that system and you can see how this pipe right here it comes up and it goes over all the way to that side and then it goes down and it goes over to the um, slave cylinder uh, so you know that there's air in here so we'll deal with that um, but let me show you uh, all these parts that I have uh, of course we're gonna be replacing the upper and lower radiator hoses um, and the seals yeah so we're gonna re re be replacing once we get the timing belt off uh, we're gonna replacing be replacing the cam and crank seals here's the belt uh, valve cover gasket uh, this uh, I believe this is the seal for that crank position sensor it's at the back of the camshaft uh, this is I believe one of the cam seals crank seal there should be another seal in here no I can't I don't know what that is so I need to oh that's a spring that's the spring for okay so I'm missing a part you got to be kidding me okay so there's a part missing I only have one cam seal I need two cam seals I have a crank seal um, this is the tensioner spring for the timing belt this is the timing belt in here well it's supposed to be let's just make sure pull this thing out yep that is the timing belt okay oh okay and uh this right here is your slave cylinder and this should be the the clutch master cylinder if i can get it out of the box get out of there okay that's it clutch master cylinder hey it even came with the reservoir so that's good so um we'll get this in first so uh, let me get this over here uh, to the bench and I'll show you how we bench bleed those. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the, the traditionally, you know, whenever you bench bleed a master cylinder, uh, whether it's a clutch or uh, brakes, um, you stick the thing on the bench, you um, uh, stick some hoses, you know, and tubes into it, and then you put it back into the reservoir and you put fluid in it and you just start pumping it until all the air eventually comes out and makes bigger bubbles and smaller and smaller than teeny tiny itty bitty bubbles and you're trying to get all those bubbles out um, well uh, I'm gonna show you how you can do this and not have any bubbles at all just one shot done you know uh, and you know some people are like why are you bench bleeding it just stick it in the in the vehicle you know and then put your tubes and then just pump the brake or whatever well with this trick you don't have to pump anything at all so we're gonna uh, bleed this you know we're gonna bench bleed it I'm, I'm saying bench bleed it because I'm gonna use the bench vise to hold it and I'll show you how we can uh, get fluid in this with no air at all and then we'll put the cap on it and then we'll move it over here and we'll put it in the vehicle and a uh, very minimum amount of bleeding and you uh, once uh, of of course you know once we get it in you know what we're gonna have to bleed it anyway and I'll show you how I do that uh, but uh, let me get this over to the bench okay uh, so this thing right here uh, you may or may not recognize it um, it is the nipple from a um, quart of uh, 80 90 weight uh, differential fluid or um, you know 80 90 weight fluid you put in your manual transmission or whatever so they come with these I save these things you know um, anyway 
we're gonna use this and this is a bottle of Mazda brake fluid and it's brand new take this dip over here and this does kind of make a mess sometimes so you just got to prepare for it um, try and get this off to where this thing will actually seal on here so i'm gonna take this nipple and it's going to screw right on top of there so tighten it up as good as possible and right here see if i can set y'all down right here so right here i have the master cylinder sitting in the vise it's not really really tight i don't want to mess it up uh, take this little plug off right here and we'll save that plug because we're going to need it. And this piece right here, I've cut it just to the point where it'll actually fit down in here and kind of screw on. I'm going to take the reservoir cap off. Set that aside. And so um, let me throw some rags on the ground right here because it's probably going to drip. So I'm going to take this, which is full, turn it upside down like this, kind of screw it in a little bit, and then I'm going to squeeze it very, very gently. And I don't know if y'all can tell, but there is fluid bubbling coming out of the coming into the reservoir hopefully y'all can see that I'm still squeezing it still keeping pressure and there are no bubbles at first there were a little bit of bubbles and then the bubbles went away and no bubbles at all and it's filling up with fluid and I'm continuing to squeeze it as long as I can you know what I don't want to do is release and try and push again uh, I'm just gonna continue continually keep squeezing this thing very gently I'm not over squeezing I don't want the thing to blow up pop off of there so it is you know about three quarters of the way full of fluid so I'm gonna release I'm gonna screw this out it's gonna start to come out of here I'm gonna take the plug stick that on and hopefully that holds it any fluid that drains out of here is going to be fine it's going to be gravity bleeding and it's not going to allow air to come into here i'm going to take this cap stick it on there and we're going right to the vehicle okay i am going to stick this in here come on get in there make sure that the the rod goes in and we're gonna dump some fluid down here so that's why i got those rags down there i'm gonna take this cap off set that aside stick the the line in there and get that started i definitely do not want to cross thread this line going in so i got it on got it finger tight okay so that's basically the best we can do at this point. Now uh, get the get the um, nuts put back on there, tighten that thing down, and we'll be done with the, the master cylinder. All right. So uh, the only other thing I did was just uh, put those bolts in, or those nuts, rather, right there and right there, and I tightened this down. So uh, we're done getting the master cylinder in so now we need to just get her up and uh, take the, the slave cylinder off and uh, let's uh, replace that. Okay so now we are gonna take the slave cylinder out and one thing I've always hated about these is the way these frames are. You, you can't get right to it, of course. It's not that bad. This is not that bad com compared to some stuff that we've had to deal with before. But I can get over the top here so I can get in there and get that line loose. 
Now, uh, one thing I want to do is pull this over here. So these are the tools and stuff that I'm going to be uh, working with. Trying to get this off. Um, and there's a chance, here's the uh, slave cylinder right here. So there's a chance that once I pull that line loose up there, it's gonna start gravity bleeding. Uh, of course, I do have the cap on the master cylinder up there, so if it does, it won't bleed out that much, and hopefully we can get the thing in quick enough. Um, but then again, you know, it doesn't uh, have a lot of uh, fluid in it, in the line, you know, it probably has some air. I'm, I guarantee you it's got some air in it. So, um, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but I have the slave cylinder sitting right here, so we can pop this out and pop the new one in. No special way of bleeding this, uh, compared to the way that we bled the master cylinder, unfortunately. But um, I'll show you how I bleed that, and uh, you can do it uh, with uh, two, two people. Uh, you can do it with one person, uh, and uh, the way that I do it is basically the one person way, but I'm gonna use this BG tool to help me uh, keep fluid in it so that it doesn't uh, you know, go, go dry in the reservoir while I'm trying to bleed this thing. And hopefully it works out, you know, and it doesn't just explode everywhere. If it does, then we'll go to the, the first one man one. I'll show you, I'll show you that. Anyway, let's get in here and Let's see if we can get these off. Uh, the first thing I want to do is try and come around here and get this. So, I mean, this vehicle is in like super good condition, you know, for what it is. And it doesn't have any rust or anything like that. These things are just coming right off. Um, and so, uh, lucky, I guess. Um, I don't feel lucky. Well, I guess maybe I am. I wouldn't feel lucky if I was fighting with this thing, trying to get it off. Um, so let me get this out of here. Nope, it ain't coming out yet. Okay. Now I'm gonna try and use this Milwaukee and you can see it's already bleeding. there. Can't see it. It's already bleeding fluid everywhere. Okay. Got it. So while fluid is dripping everywhere, I get this out, throw it on the ground, get this one in there. Nope, that ain't how it goes. Try and get at least one bolt in holding in place. Oh God, I don't think y'all can probably see this. Well, got fluid dripping down my arm. Okay. 
Now let's see if I can get this started. It's not gonna be that easy. And of course, just like the master cylinder, I don't want this thing to cross thread. Of course, I got brake fluid dripping all the way down to my elbow. Come on, get in there. I can't see it. I can feel it. So maybe it might be better to get the other bolt in. Seeing that I can't really see what I'm doing. Let me try and get this other bolt in here. Okay, it's going. Let me tighten those down. At least get them tight enough that it's actually in place. Okay. And I think I may have gotten it started, but just the same way that it came out, it's not gonna wanna go in. And I gotta make sure that I'm not cross-threading that. And actually that gravity bleeding that it's doing right now is not bad for it. I mean, we flushed out the line for sure. Just hope that there's enough fluid in the left in the reservoir that didn't go dry because then that just you know goes against everything that we've already done trying to bench bleed that brake master cylinder. Of course, uh, the way that I, I'm going to uh, bleed the system, it's it's almost like a flush. I'm basically going to use the BG flush machine to help me bleed this. And that's usually the way I do with brake systems. I use that thing, it's just so much easier. It puts constant pressure on the system. You don't have to have somebody there pumping the brake forever and ever, especially when you replace uh, HECU systems and stuff. There's a lot of pumping, a lot of bleeding needs to be done. So that's tight. So, uh, it's gonna clean this up some and then we'll get that machine hooked on. I'll show you how we're gonna bleed it. All right, this is how I am going to attempt to do this. So the uh, reservoir did go almost dry, so <laughs> um, it may have gotten some air in there. I'm pretty sure we got air in there anyway. So uh, this should take care of it. So this is the BG flush machine, and we got some brake fluid in here. Um, and uh, it's for uh, doing a brake flush. And we got all these adapters and stuff like that. So this is an adapter that I rigged together. And this plug right here fits right into that reservoir, right? So I'm gonna take this chain right here and stick it on this side. And I'm gonna put this down in here so that this plug goes into that like that. And then, let's see if I can do this. I tighten this down and it, that plug, it acts like a, um, um, I don't know what you would call it, expansion plug, I guess. And it expands the plug, it pulls it from the bottom and expands it so it'll seal. I've never done this before, I'll just let you know, I've never used this adapter. So we'll see how it works. So tighten this up and now I can't get it off. So just to be sure that everybody's safe, I'll pull this chain around and hook it. Try and 
hook it right there somehow. Right like that. Tighten this down to tighten the chain. Come on. And that should just keep it from popping off. Hopefully blowing up or whatever, exploding, getting brake fluid all over my face and everything. Cause that happens, it happens a lot. You know, I did an oil change this morning, dropped the oil filter into the drain plug or, or drain, oil drain, and it just splashed hole everywhere and got all over me. And you know, it's just another day, another day in the shop. So, oh, come on, hurry up, get in there. Okay, it's, I think that's good enough. So, this thing right here, uh, we need any of that. Uh, we're going to use this pressure line, which has brake fluid in it. And uh, fluid comes right from that reservoir right there. I'm going to plug it on right here. That's closed. I need to get air in here, it uses air. So grab the air hose. Stick that on right there. Which come on, get on there. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Hold the thing. Okay. Y'all can sit right there. Okay, I got it on. <laughs> see? Okay. Uh, and let's see if it, it explodes. I'm going to start to turn this pressure up. I don't want to get any over 15 PSI. Probably go even shorter, even smaller amount, like 10 PSI. And this is putting brake fluid into that reservoir. And of course, pressurizing it. And I don't see any dripping going on. See any dripping over there, so. It's good, so we're good. So um, there's a couple different ways you could do this. Uh, the first way would be to, um, since there's no fluid in that uh, slave cylinder, you get somebody over here pushing on the, uh, the clutch pedal and probably what's gonna happen is you push the pedal to the floor and it'll stay on the floor. So they need to use their hand. So they grab the pedal, pull it back up and push it. And you get somebody underneath there and to crack the bleeder valve and they can just hold their finger over the bleeder valve. And what that'll do is it'll push fluid out, but when they lift up on the uh, clutch pedal, it won't suck air back in. So that's one way to do it. And they could just keep on pushing, keep on pushing until you start getting a pssst, 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 and uh, brake fluid starts squirting out. And then you would close it, tell them pump it up. They'll pump the, the pedal three or four times and hold it down. And then you would crack the um, bleeder and just keep uh, you know crack the bleeder the stuff will come out you close it tell them to pump it up again and you keep doing that till there's no more air coming out of there so that's one way another way is to and I'm gonna use this too right here this is just a can right and uh, it's a can and it's got some junk in there it's got a, um, a this hose going down in there right and so what you could do is you take this hose and you hook this onto the bleeder, you put brake fluid in there, and you do the same thing, only you crack the bleeder, stick this on there, then you come over here and you start pumping it. And what it'll do is it'll push fluid in, but it won't let air come back out because it'll be sucking fluid from the bottom of the can. So that's another way you can do it. You can do it by hand, uh, or by yourself, I mean. Uh, the way I'm gonna do it is just one step up from that, and that is using this machine to pressurize it. I got 10 PSI in there right now. And I'm going to stick this onto the bleeder and I'm gonna crack the bleeder and then um, the fluid should just come out. I'll just let it come out till there's no more air bubbles coming out and then we'll see what happens. So let's start bleeding it. <laughs> let's go. Okay, <laughs> well, one thing I forgot to do, we're looking for leaks. This valve is off. So I need to turn it on now. We need to check for leaks. And I don't see anything. So, 
Yeah, it helps to have this valve on, you know, because that's the only way you can actually <laughs> apply pressure to this thing. So uh, let me see if I can figure out a unique way that we can get down in here and y'all can actually see what's going on with that bleeder. So uh, I'll see what I can do. Okay, hopefully the camera's in an area that you can actually see what's going on. So here's the bleeder valve right here and it's got this rubber cap on it. So let me try and get this cap off. Come on. Okay, set that aside. I'll take my hose from this can. Plug that on there. Just kind of kind of let it hang down. And we already got the pressure on. 10 PSI. This is an 8 millimeter wrench. I'm just going to crack this open. And there's the fluid. Already coming out. So we're going to leave this open for a little bit. See if we get any air. I may actually walk over and turn the pressure up. Uh, I don't want to turn it any more than 15 PSI. Just let it flush a little bit. And I'm looking at the the reservoir on the flush machine. I don't want that thing to go low. So it definitely had enough fluid in it to flush this entire thing out. And let's see if I close this. I don't see that it's actually engaging the clutch. Let me try and turn it up. See if I can turn it up without it, without it exploding. We go up to almost 15 psi okay it's up let me crack it open again just want to make sure i get all the air out crack this open so some of those micro bubbles you're going to get out of there just because uh they start it starts to leak right here at the bottom of the bottom of this thing right here, it starts to actually suck air in right there. So I'm trying to hold this can up. And it may actually drip a little bit from the bleeder valve. And make sure that this hose is not coming off of there. But, um, uh, let, me, let me look at the reservoir. It's going down. It's definitely, I think it's already put enough fluid in it that it should have, you know, passed any air bubbles that were in it out. There must have not been much air in there. Uh, of course, it did uh, gravity bleed whenever we we're putting this, this slave cylinder on, for sure. It is uh, fluid going all down my arm and everything. So um, that, that may be it. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And then uh, let's check it and let's see if, let's get my wrench out of here. Come on. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's uh, check it and see if uh, we got a, a clutch. Let me put this cap back on here because I'll forget. Yeah, let's uh, check it out. All right, this is where we were sitting at about 15 PSI. I'm gonna turn this down. Pressure release, relief, relief, release. Release all the pressure that's in there. And it doesn't look like it was leaking anywhere. I'm gonna turn this off. So we don't have any pressure in the reservoir right now. So when I push on that, that, uh, clutch pedal I'm not gonna get a false reading so let's see if the clutch pedal works see what we got here oh see I can't fit in here so push on the pedal and it, I mean it feels good it it really does it comes right back so that's it that, that's pretty much it I can try and 
I start it up. I'm gonna start it up in start it up in neutral. Pedal the floor. It goes in the gear. Yep. The friction point it just seems just right. So that was it. And that's all it took. And shut her down. So that was all it took to bleed that. And uh, I don't know if you can see this, uh, that is the amount of fluid I got out of there. Um, not much, you know, so it's not like I was bleeding a whole lot, but that's all it took. And apparently there was not a lot of air in there. So that's a good thing. Um, so that is pretty much it. We got the clutch uh, master cylinder in there. We got the slave cylinder in. We got everything bled. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have the uh, cam, one of the cam seals. And there's no sense in taking all this apart, you know, um, and doing that timing belt and all that stuff. If we don't have the cam seal to put in it, because then the thing's just going to be sitting here. Turns out uh, we all the parts were had to have been ordered. Uh, most of them came from Dallas. One of them, that cam seal, came from somewhere else. So it's saying, so it actually said three days to a week. So um, unfortunately, uh, this. Um, video is going to be short, um, but uh, I still need to do this job uh, whenever the part comes in. If y'all want to see something like that, uh, you want to see me uh, replace this uh, timing uh, belt and valve cover gasket, the crank position sensor seal and the, uh, coolant hoses and stuff like that. You want to see that? Just run on down in the comments. Let me know if that's something that you would like to see. Um, just to let you know, I, um, I'm, you know, I'm sure you already know I'm limited to whatever comes in the front door. So, and I ain't going to show you a job that I've already done before, you know. So, I mean, the next job I'm pulling in, I'm pulling in a CX-5 um, right now and I need to do a coolant uh, uh, water control um, controller, you know, water temperature controller. And uh, I've already done one of those, you know, on the, on the, um, you know, on the show. So, and, and if you haven't seen that, you know, I'll put a link right up here. You can go check that out. I think it was on a CX-30. I'm not sure. I can't really remember, but I will put a link up there so you can check it out. Um, but that's the next job that I'm doing today. Ain't no sense in recording that because it's already been there. You know, we've already done it. So, um, like I said, I'm limited to whatever comes in the front door. Um, uh, but I haven't done one of these on the channel. If you want to see me replace this timing belt, run on down in the comments and let me know. You know, how bad do you want to see it? <laughs> uh, I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you. Do not forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. What the? Why? Who calls this bell?